gold per, right? And requires eight days to solve. Jihad's not our high priest. So this is like in case Harem died, we could throw Jihad in there, right? But Harem's not going to die because, well, we don't adventure with him. So, um, yeah, I'm not worried about this at all. So, uh, yeah, we're going to ignore that one. All right, what else we got here? Other events. Uh, okay, so we got to go see what's going on with that before we do anything else. Oh, Bumper Harvest. Still can't do it. Oh, because Tristan's doing weed. Oops, did I? That didn't come out, right? So everyone does stand between Crystal Light and Walmart's brand sells glass light. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, True. <laughs> hey, it's like a buck seventy one and it makes three gallons. Yeah, it's well worth it. All right, Temple for the People. Did I even I didn't start this yet? I thought I did. All right. Bumper harvest. Did I just screw it up? All right. We got to go see what this essay is. Herbalist. Oh, I did. I had him on here. Yep. I had him on herbalist. Because I thought it was funny that I was running one called Herbalist and one um, called Mysterious Weed. So I'm going to... All right, this event can be canceled today. Good. We're going to go back onto Herbalist. Put him on that. Start event. Okay, now we're going to go to Rank Up. Oh, we have to go before we do that. We have to go see what this essay is about. Still better than I can afford, brother. I just get light, like water. <laughs> Jihad looks to be puzzled and amused at the same time. Your grace, I brought you an extremely unusual message. It's, how should I put it? An essay on your barony, written by Jubilos Narthropple and published only recently. I thought you might like to see it for yourself. Jihad hands you a magazine. Can't even, yeah, don't lie to me. Don't you dare lie to me, True Flat. All right, um, let's, um, there it is. Come on. Right click, there we go. Between the bogs of the river kingdoms and the infertile clay soils of Bravoy lies the region called the Stolen Lands, a picturesque area which combines the worst features of both previously mentioned countries. It's a woodland where herds of deer, swarm of mosquitoes, and gangs of bandits have their pastures, though the latter were formidably decreased in numbers thanks to the efforts of the local baroness, a protege of the Restoff sword lords who'd promised to bring some resemblance of order to these lands. Hoping to learn to what degree she succeeded, your faithful servant went to the stolen lands himself. Certainly, I pre, uh, preceded my visit with a letter, but mailing service in this new barony functions with an efficiency of zero. No one came to greet me, except for a horde of hangry kobolds. Here, these creatures can be met way more often than guardsmen or, let's say, street cleaners. I barely managed to fight off those pests that I narrowly escaped drowning on the river ford. The only thing here more ra uh, rarely met than a paved road is a good, well-maintained bridge. Every ruler ought to remember that the realm's roads are her face, and here they are filthy and in desperate need of good old stone. After all those misadventures, I finally reached the capital. Compared to other parts of the barony, the city looks relatively good, despite the smell. I should give credit to the ruler's, uh, ruler's efforts. There's buildings in progress everywhere. Passing by traders praise the Baroness for eliminating the bandits and express hopes that someday she'll deal with the wildland monsters as well. I wouldn't recommend that you choose this destination for your summer vacation, but if you're tough and unpretentious, 
If you can work hard and defend yourself, you might try your luck here. Working hands are in great demand in the capital. Also, there are plenty of jobs for sell swords and free adventurers. After all, the local Baroness used to be one of them not so long ago. As for me, I guess I'll stay here for a while to watch how the new barony grows. If I don't drown in some swamp, become a snack for some owl beast, or die of dysentery, we'll meet in the next issue. What a dick. <laughs> I love it. And he's going to be such an ass about this whole thing. Oh crap, I just realized my manners. I forgot to welcome everyone to the stream. Hope you're all doing fantastic this evening. Feel free to chime in. Uh, so your jokes say something stupid. We all have a sense of humor. And you know what? I'm wondering, and I'm going to test this myself. I don't, I, this should work. We'll see. Maybe not. That's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I may have to fix it. But there, it, it should be. Why do the cows wear bells? I don't know. Why do the cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. <laughs> nice. Oh, well done. I don't have the sound effect pulled up. Otherwise, I would totally give you the whole rim shot. Okay, so we read the note. I imagine that we need to talk to Jubilos about something. Where is he at? Where are you, you little bastard? Jubilos raises his head and closes his notebook. Ah, it's you. How can I help you? Um, what are you jotting down in your notebook all the time? Notes on our adventures, good ideas that come to mind. I don't know how it is with you, but in my case, my mind's constantly producing thoughts and ideas worthy of writing down. Some I use in my articles and books. Others I will share with my audience next time I speak at Foray, Lagos, and Absalom. Some other thoughts should be kept out of the public view for a while. Our world isn't yet ready for certain revelations. Um, tell me something, you know, we're going to skip all this for now. Oh, I received the journal with your article. I thought it could, or I thought it would be worse. Are you proud that I haven't found anything in your barony worth my attention? Hmm. Well, at least that means that there's nothing truly disastrous in your land. So yes, perhaps you may be proud of that. You're not very friendly, you know? Do you think so? Jubilus looks at you above his glasses. Why ever not, if I may ask? Perhaps you confuse superficially friendly words with genuinely friendly intentions. Believe it or not, I wish you only well. As a proof of what I can point to the fact that I travel with you, and I'm talking with you right here and now. Tell me, which do you value more? An artificial smile or an honest attitude bolstered by friendly advice and assistance? Um, let's see here. Ooh, even the most useful advice is better received if it's offered the right way. Your advice sounds like you only aim is to please your own ego. Damn. I'll be honest with you too then. You've become rather too fat lately. So accept this friendly help. Tonight, you go to sleep without dinner. <laughs> Oh man, okay. Can I I oh it won't let me save. Damn it. I really want to see what his response is to that. Wow. I gotta go with that one. That was a joke, right? Insult, doubt, and resentment chase each other over Jubilo's face. Well, I admit, I may overreact sometimes. Perhaps my manner of speaking may seem offensive to some. But I'm usually right when you get down to it. And the truth, no matter how unpleasant, it's always better than lying to someone's face. We shouldn't let such minor things as my manner of speaking or tonight's dinner harm our friendship. Um, let's see here. No, okay, so we're good enough for that. We'll, we'll get into the gnome race stuff a little bit because that does come into play um, later on. I think most of their little story stuff does come, come into play as far as like their, their quests and stuff. So we'll definitely read into that at some point. Uh, thanks for the conversation.
Thanks. Uh, come back when you run out of clever ideas again. Nice. Three what? What are we talking about? What did I miss? Saving? Ah, ha, ha. We didn't miss that. All right. Let's come over here. Talk to the storyteller. What I value most is a gas-guzzling muscle car because I'm trying to rid the planet of all the oil it has in it. I mean, when there is an oil spill, everyone says it's toxic and hurting the environment. I'm just trying... Dude, bravo to you, True, for, for trying to do your part. All right. Uh, relics, anything? Oh, oh, this is just the, the coin. But hey, 200 gold coins, I'll take that. The air is so fresh, it's like I'm back home. And, oh, he's teasing us again. Yeah, see? I'd be happy to trade the whole set of items for their story. Can it hear you calling us? Let us hurry. Oh, holy crap. I see the flames of the forge. It's so close I can touch it. The heat sears my face and the sparks sting my cheeks. But there's no fear in my soul. Only admiration and reverence for the work of an artist. The storyteller seems to be in some sort of trance. His unseeing eyes reflect the flames of a forge that burned out long ago. 10,000 gold coins. Wow. And 1,350 experience. Items lost. The soot blackened apron. Uh, okay, so we lost all the stuff that he's going to put together. I am Kalgan, an apprentice of the great Dwarzif, the first smith of the Bronze Shield Fortress. And I'm fascinated by the work of a true master. The smith's hammer is raised in the air. The forge bellows roar. The sparks sizzle and rhythmic ringing fills the room. The anvil, called the searing palm, replies with a happy, booming voice. This music, this song overwhelms my being. I fear a tear of joy run down my cheek and hastily wipe it away, for it is proof of my weakness. The tongs in my hands are covered with soot. I help the master all I can, but I'm not allowed to raise my own hammer over the anvil. Master Zwarzif protects his anvil zealously, won't let anyone else near it. It usually offends me, but not now. Now my heart follows the ringing beat of a fiery song. All I hear is silence. Bronze Shield Fortress is sound asleep, save for the blinking of the signal bonfires. No one knows of the blasphemy about to be committed in the heart of the fortress. The storyteller chokes down a lump in his throat. I push open the door of the smithy. I fear the door's squeal of protest will wake everyone, but silence quickly returns. I take a step inside. I stoke the fire and don my soot-smeared apron. Long have I dreamt of the anvil. It calls to me. Its alluring voice captivates me. Its ringing is full of promise. Tonight, I will work the anvil myself. Tonight, I'll become a creator. And Master Dwarzev, upon seeing my work, will be forced to accept me as his equal. The fire raises to the ceiling and I raise my hammer to make the first stroke. Something's wrong. When did I make a mistake? The, story feller, the storyteller's face collapses. The anvil, it won't sing. It moans under my hammer. Instead of sweet music, I hear cries of pain begging me to stop. I clench my teeth and strike again and again and again. I will make it work. I will sing for me, even if I must torture it to do so. The moans of the anvil become a monotonous rumble, but I can't stop. The smithy door swings open. Master Dwarzov stands before me, disheveled and furious. He screams curses at me, but I can't hear them. The metal of my work crumbles under my hammer, but I can't see it. My eyes are blinded by tears. The storyteller shakes his head to clear it of the visions, a weary smile on his face. Well, that's it. But what happened to you? I mean, to Colgan. I... He left, hung his apron on the hook, tossed away his hammer and tongs, and left Bronze Shield Fortress. Deep in his heart, Kolgan knew that Master Dwarzev was right all along. Kolgan's hammer would never create a masterpiece. Hard work is a poor substitute for inspired talent. Kolgan turned his eyes to Droskar. The god of the Dark Dwarves accepted the new follower. The Draugr gave Kolgan shelter and provided him with unceasing, tiresome work, work that required no talent, just endless routine. He 
He crafted weapons for many Durgar army, and nobody expected masterpieces of him. He soon forgot all about the searing palm Master Dwarzev and the blasphemy he had committed, and it seems to me that there, in the dark tunnels, serving Droskar, Kolgar finally found happiness. What happened to the anvil after that? It lost its voice. Bronze Shield Fortress never again heard it sing. The storyteller sighs. It's still functional, and the weapons made on it were durable, but nothing more. No master ever managed to craft a masterpiece there again. The dwarven weapons gradually lost their enchantments, and defending against local dangers became increasingly difficult. I, su I suppose Colgan's discretion... Desecration was a strong contributor to the dwarves' eventual abandonment of the fortress. Thank you for the story, storyteller. He inclines his head respectfully. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's see. Shards. Oops. Oh my god, I clicked on. There we go. May I? Yes. Scorch piece of metal. Shards. Curious find. These are pieces of the Star Commander's Glove, a gift from another world, a treasure that fell from the sky to be buried in Numerian soil for millennia. Oh, how I wish I could visit the homeland of this artifact to learn its whole story. Alas, that is well beyond my powers. But if you find the rest of the 17 pieces, I will at last be able to restore the creation of these craftsmen from the stars. 17 pieces. Holy crap. All right. I'll leave you to your legends. All right, let's see here. Do, 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 just, um, I got to read through all the chat. Hold on. Make all cars a thousand horsepower and only two miles per gallon. Problem solved. <laughs> I don't think so, though. I, 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 I disagree with that assessment there. Uh, what does Painter says? The only battery in my car starts the... Nice. Most like killing two birds with one stone. We help the environment and the population of humans because 85% of people can't drive full horsepower car. That's very true. Uh, true for president. I'll get your buttons today. Nice. Just to make all cars manual transmission, 98% of people under 35 can't drive them. Yeah, but the problem is, is that's only 98% of people in urban areas. Because I guarantee you that 98% of people in this small town know how to drive a manual transmission. <laughs> so, granted, I also live in Texas, so. 100% correct. Uh, greetings from 85%. Thank you guys so much. One of my detailers, 24 years old, can't drive a stick. That is amazing. 90% uh, of all cars sold in the U.S. for years are automatic. Yep. Here's home, buddy. Everyone needs to know. Yes, everyone does need to know how to drive a stick. Absolutely. You never know when you may be put in a situation where you need to drive a manual transmission because some crazy crap can happen. You could be out on the road and you need to get into a vehicle with a manual transmission and drive somewhere and you shouldn't know how to do that. Okay, so we are done with the storyteller. I need to see um, first 78 days, plenty of time. So we still have plenty of time to go get this. Yeah, it's not working count. My dog ate my math homework, so you can't add. All right. So projects. No. So do we have anything going on? Okay. So we get one day for mysterious weed. Four days for herbalist. Now I see light at the end of the tunnel. It's a, hundred, a thousand horsepower manual gas guzzling muscle car. Absolutely. As you can say, he's crunching the numbers. Oh, nice. I like it. I had no idea that your dog was like some tax accountant. Who can do that? Oh. Well, if we're going to do that, then I would want to put him on that. Because it would only take eight days and then put him on another... But can I rank up anyone? Yes. The Regent. 
Yes, Valerie gets a rank up. Take a look. So Divine's up at rank three. All right. Save. And go. All right, next, success. Triumph! The advisor bargained such a sophisticated and mutually beneficial deal that the news spread like fire. More fortune hunters have already arrived, bringing their fortune and bringing profit to the treasury. Nicely done, Jubilost. All right, so we have two new events. Tragedy at the mine. Local stone mine has a rock slide. The stone merchants have jacked up the prices and construction materials are running short. And the river maiden. There's a mermaid in a river where trade ships operate. She's begun uh, to sink passing vessels. She must be chased away. So what's the DC on this? DC 14. So any one of them. Uh, let's go with castle. Tragedy at the mine. We'll go with Valerie. Bumper harvest. That's an opportunity. How many other opportunities do we have? What is this region's one? Oh! Who do I have for that? Yes, we will be doing that. But I can't start that claim yet because that's going to tie us up for seven days. So I need to get everyone else ready with events, right? So start event. Start event. What else do we have? That's uh, events. And who do I have claiming that? Who did I pick for that? Regions? Oh, I picked Harem. Okay, so I can't pull Harem off of anything else. No, she's already doing that. All right. Do, do, do regions save it yeah dad joke is definitely on fire start the claim here we go all right that's done nice Means we get to put down another town, boys. What do sprinters eat before a race? No idea. River Maiden. Triumph! Our soldiers stormed into the mermaid's waters and scared her off. She abandoned the whole river and merchants now choose the safe route over the others. Nice. Nothing. They fast. Wah, wah, wah. All right, Rusty Dogs, a team of mercenaries known for their rust-colored armor, have arrived in the barony. The accountants recommend hiring them, while the offers recommend simply coming to an understanding with them. Hmm. Let's see what else we got. Hands of Gold, as an opportunity. Still life with lemon peel drawn by an local artist was celebrated by the connoisseurs of art lovers. Such a masterpiece can't go to waste. Okay. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Okay, so we can... We can... I need to do this. Get that going. Start that project. We will level up Jubilost. What else we got? Trade agreements, Temple of the Elk, trade agreement. Support the counselor's endeavors. Eating the poor in the week. Who can do that? No one. 
No, we're not doing that. Trade agreement. Harem's the only one that can do that. No, we're not doing that. Gallery's already busy. All right. Uh, rank up. Uh, did I start the other ones? There, oh, so Valerie has one more day. Maybe I want to skip a day. I typically don't want to do that, but I may want to do that so I can get her on something the next day. Let's do that. We're going to save this. All right, skip one day. There we go. Success. Well done, Val. Okay. Um, we can actually put him on Rusty Dogs. It's only three days. A Hands of Gold. Tristian. Uh, no. No. Oh. What else we got? Um, there we go. All right, this is going to be a big one. That's pretty much everyone that we have, right? Who's not busy doing something? They're all busy doing something. These four are doing something, and we're going to do this whole thing with Harem right now. Before I do that, I wanted to cover this first. Lindsay, why would you look at that? Svetlana sent you a letter. It seems she's worried about old Boken. The letter's very emotional. Is this Dragon? Dragon bows, coughs quietly in his beard. Your Grace, I'd like to apologize. I suppose I was a little headstrong during my last visit. I have a bad temper. In the mountains, they used to call me Grumbler. Well, I didn't expect my petition to be taken seriously. No one wants to share it with strangers, even if their demands are quite lawful. Please know that I appreciate your honesty. Please accept this. I worked hard on it. I hope it serves you well. It's a decent piece of work, to be fair, but not a masterpiece. Masterpieces are rare. Once-in-a-lifetime accomplishments. Anyway, I have an idea how to use our family relic for our, your greater glory, but I'm going to need your help. Come by if you're interested. I'll tell you more. All right. Thank you for your gift. We're definitely going to visit him. He's one of our artisans. He's going to make some cool thing for us. Where's this letter? First, we, well, we'll check out Mayhem in a second. Where's the letter? There it is. Your Grace, I hope the matters of state in this land of ours are indeed all fine and well, and what troubles there um, are don't weigh too heavily upon your mind. I write to ask you to check our local herb doctor, Boken. Poor old man's losing his mind. He spends all day and night stooped over his cauldron. He looks about to lash out at anyone, especially those he doesn't know. He even snarls at me and Oleg, which he's never have let himself do before. Please come and see him before the old codger loses his mind completely. May Aristil save him. We have no one to turn to but you. Hoping you come as soon as possible, I remain very truly yours, Svetlana Leviton. Well, what a lovely little letter. All right, inventory. Where is... Um, oh, there it is. Mayhem. It's a two-handed great axe. It's 2 to 13 damage. It's plus 1. This plus one anarchic great axe is infused with the power of chaos. It makes the weapon chaotically aligned and thus bypasses the corresponding damage reduction. It deals an extra 2d6 points of damage against all creatures of lawful alignment. This anarchic great axe cannot be equipped by anyone of lawful alignment. Alrighty then. So excited about that. 
So, who is hanging around in here? All right, not much. So before we go running off and doing any of that, I'm going to come over here. And we're going to go events. So those two are queued up. Projects. Those two are queued up. We're going to save. All right. And go. All right. And that's going to be a success. Rusty Dogs Triumph Military plus six. Nice. Another Triumph Loyalty plus six. Nice. Success. Success. We did it. Woohoo. All right. Let's see. Treasurer requests uh, your attention. General requests an audience. Doomsayer scares town folk. Great. The art of making friends an opportunity. And then we're back to the normal stuff. Okay. So before we get out of here and do this, um, I need to take a very quick break. So um, I encourage all of you to stand up, stretch your legs, go get you something to drink, get a quick bio break. And uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes with some more Pathfinder. So I'll catch you guys on the flip side. <laughs> 